What'd you cook tonight, Elena? Daddy cooked fried chicken. What? What'd y'all cook? What'd y'all eat with fried chicken? Fries. Yes, I love French fries with fried chicken. That's one of my favorites. I know y'all had some good cake. Did y'all have some good cake? No, sir. No? Okay. Where's your mom and daddy? Around there cleaning up? Yes, sir. Okay. Where's Alton? What's he doing? Running around? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, we got a special guest tonight. Um, I'll give you, I'll tell you a little bit about him later, but I'll let him tell you about himself. Um, um pretty much I'll just tell you his name. I know his father. I went to uh, I was in school with his dad at uh, UNC Pembroke. You know, he's going to do some devotion with us tonight. We're going to get started. We have a uh, we did one of these about a couple weeks ago. So I have. Can everybody see this? Can y'all see my letters? Yes, sir. Can y'all hear me? Yes. So, you might need to write. How many lines do we have there? I can't see. How many lines do we have? Is it 10? Oh, I've heard 10. I heard 10 or 11. Which one is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Ten letters. This is a very this is a very important word. So we're gonna go around. Hey Jory. All right. We're gonna go around to everybody and start guessing letters. And whenever you guess, when you uh give me a letter and you think you know the word. Uh, you can say the word, but if you have to get the wrong word, that means you're out. You can't guess anymore. So pick your words carefully. So let's start with, okay, anybody just wants to give me a letter. A. A, there is an A. Actually, there's there's two A's. So, Elena, give me a letter. E. All right. Got somebody else joining. Let me get them in. E. There are. There is an E. There is an E, Elena. Okay. Anybody else? Jordan? Jaden, I mean. Jaden? I. No, I. Not this time. What about Lakaya? T. No T. Um, Taylor. C. No C. Anybody else? Uh, Christian. R. No R. Anybody else that has not guessed yet?
Okay. Who do we have on five two one three two one three? They might, I don't know if they, they might need to be joined with, uh, Mr. My, David. Yes. This is Paula. Hey, Sister Paula. But I'm just on the phone listening. I didn't, I can't see. Oh, the okay. Screen. Yeah, I have, I have 10 lines and I'm asking people to give me letters to figure out the word that I have, um, on the, uh, board, eraser board. So let's right. go back, let's go back to Lakaya. D. No D's. Uh, Elena. L. Uh oh. She hit a nerve on that one. L. Can you do you know the word, Elena? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Right. Davy. Yes. My computer had shut off on me, so I'm just now joining. Oh, is this Joy? Yes. Okay. But can I take a, a guess at the word? Yeah. Is it hallelujah? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, Elena gave us the, the, the missing letters that we needed to figure that out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a very... Will you erase that for me, brother? That's a very important word, guys. Hallelujah. And I just want to give you a, a couple of facts about hallelujah, the word hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, uh, it has two roots, two root words in the word. Hey, Brother Rafe. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Good, brother. Good. Wonderful to have you tonight. <laughs> hallelujah is made of two, two, uh, two separate words. The first word is a Hebrew word, and it's H-A-L-L-E-L-U, hallelujah. That means to praise joyously. The Yah, which is spelled Y-A-A, -A, it's spelled Y-A-J-A-H, uh, but it's pronounced Yah, it means a shortened form of the unspoken name of God. So if you put those two together, hallelujah and Yah, that would mean the highest form of praise or tribute to the Lord. So whenever you uh, are in church or you um, hear something that someone says that's out of the word of God and it's the truth and you, you want to respond hallelujah, that's the ultimate uh, High, or ultimate or highest form of praise that you can get give to God in that in that situation. You know, we say, "I will." What's some other words that we use to um, back up, like the preacher, or when when someone says something that you do you believe in, or you know that's the truth, that's from the Word of God. What's another word that people use to to say in church, or when you're talking to them about that means the truth? It's like you, it's the truth. That's the truth. What's another word that people use? Amen or praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any other words? Yeah. Okay. All right. Amen and praise the Lord. But hallelujah is the highest form of praise and honor to God. So I just want you to put that put that in your memory bank and let that soak in for a little bit. Um, it's okay to praise God, guys. It's okay to say amen sometimes, but we, we need to be make sure we, we hear the truth when we, when we respond in that way. 
So it's, it's wonderful to praise the, praise God, but let's make sure we use it at, at, at the right times and when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, not just saying it uh, to be funny or or, or just uh, to be heard. Uh, we're supposed to use it in in um, regards to the Holy Spirit as well. Um, this guy that's coming to us tonight, a wonderful young young man. I've had the chance to meet him tonight and just talk a little bit with him and. Uh, he's going to give you some information about it, about his background, who he is, and what he's doing right now, and everything. And then he's going to tell a little bit about his uh, maybe his testimony, and then he's going to do some uh, devotion time with us. So I'm very honored to introduce you to Brother Cameron Bryant. Uh, this is Brother uh, Travis Bryant, and your mom's name is Travis and Teresa Bryant. Brother uh, Travis is, uh, is he still over the uh, safety? He's still over safety and uh, security out at uh, at uh, UNCP. Uh, he's the supervisor there, the, the uh, main guy there. And uh, I'm going to let give it to him and let him uh, share his heart and, and the word of God with you tonight. So y'all, y'all give a little hand clap to Brother Cameron as he joins us. How y'all doing tonight? Hey, brother David, for the opportunity to come for y'all today. I hope all you know, doing good. I'd just like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm, as you already said, my name is Cameron Bryant. I'm 19 years old. Um, I attend RCC, Robinson Community College, going to an electrical program. And I'd like to come in here and give you some encouragement today about the Lord. But I got saved at September the 1st, 2019. So this September will be two years. So I haven't, I haven't been here long. I just want to tell you that I connect with you. I know what all you're facing. I can only imagine in this world there's so many things that we may face. And I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you. If nobody loves you, Jesus loves you and he cares for you. My story, I grew up in church. My family went to church and they brought me to church. But when I was young, I really didn't. I wasn't really too interested in it. I really didn't enjoy it. I just really didn't feel at home. And I went to, I went, I grew up in Mount Harry Baptist Church and the people that I never really connected with. And it's really important to really connect with people and have friends that motivate you and push you. And I know that there are days and not many people that are really close to the Lord and live right, do right. And we only know we do what others do. So we just, whatever we're around, we're going to become. I think one of the stress how important it is to find people that you can connect with that are close and do right and avoid people that do wrong and do the things they shouldn't do because sooner or later you'll find yourself in the same situation. But about 2000 and um, I believe in 2017, I went on a summer camp and I met a friend. His name is Benjamin. And um, at the time at that camp, we talked a little bit. We became friends. Like I just contact and we began talking to one another after that camp, and sooner or later, about a year later, the following summer, he had asked me to come to his church, and I was kind of nervous about it because I really didn't want to go. I, was, I really was to myself person. I'm really quiet, but as of now, I mean, that can change me doing this. Let me show you. But I went there, and I saw all these people. I really connected. I felt like I was at home, and the people were, they were really smart people when they were really love the Lord and just their light just shone upon me and I never saw people my age do things that they did and they just motivated me and they kind of convicted me because I would do things and then I'd, I'd do it around them and they'd make me feel bad and just they were just different and it just gave a light upon me it gave a conviction and being around them and they talked to me about stuff and I had, at the time I had really had no idea what they were talking about and I just had something inside of me that I just wanted to learn and get around it and just figure out what they were talking about. And then I went to that church. I was really just going on Wednesdays. I went to VBS. I was just going to them. And it was like, we need to come on Sunday. I want you to come on a Sunday service. And I was like, well, maybe next week, next week. It just kept going further and further. And 
I was I we went to that church in May. I didn't go on Sunday till August. And I went there in August. I can tell you it was early. I went there and I heard the word and heard the preachers preach, the singer sing, and everybody come shake up my hand and hey brother, nice to have you. And it just felt like people were just nice and it just felt belonging. And every time the preacher would preach, I just feel something inside of me. And sooner and every Sunday I would just ask being questions like, What does that mean? What is this? And he'd ask, he'd answer. I just wanted to know, just to drive. And then after a while, September the 1st, I was listening to him preach and I said, I went up to the altar and told the preacher I wanted to get saved. And after that day in my life, it changed dramatically. I mean, things have really changed. But I want to say that life is not easy. It's really tough being a Christian. It's tough trying to live right. It's, it's tough trying to do right because we have an enemy and the devil. He's our adversary that tempts us every single day. And every single day is a battle. I mean, I, I fight and battle every single day of my life. And the Bible tells you, you will not, the race is not over until you're in the grave, pretty much. And every day we must fight until that day. And we, we can't, we cannot give up. But it just, it's really not easy. But I want to tell you that it's possible because anything is possible with God. I just want to give you some encouragement. And I just want to know if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I give Brother David my contact and you can contact me because I really, I really want to see young and young people. It's really important to start while you're young. I mean, it's important because you get it as soon as you can because you never know when the time is. You never know what can happen. And you just, it's important to be a light and shine by others. I want to read you a little bit of scripture today. I'm going to have to find it. Let's see. I'm going to read a few verses today. If you want to follow along, I'll be reading from 1 Peter chapter 5. I read verses 7 to 11. And he says, Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom remain steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are being accomplished in brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who have called us to eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you suffered for a while, made you perfect, established, struggling, till you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. I just wanted to emphasize that the Bible says to cast all your cares upon him, all your worries. It doesn't say cast some, cast a little bit, cast half, cast three-fourths, cast, it says to cast all, because we ourselves cannot carry all any of ourselves. We must give him all our words before he, because he really cares for us. He wants to see us win. He wants to see us happy. He doesn't want to see us stressed out. And I know when we try to do things ourselves, we always want to feel. Because without him, I mean, we are nothing. He says, be sober, be diligent, because the devil is your adversary. And every time he's going to tempt you, he's not going to come when you're up. He's going to come when you're down, because he knows. He knows your weaknesses. He knows when you're sad. And when you're sad and down, it's more easy to fall. It says, he's a roaring lion walking about seeking who he may devour. He just goes up upon the earth, walking to and fro, seeking those who are weak, so he may devour you. But we must say, do as it says, and remain, resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are being accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. This scripture basically is saying that you are not the only one that is struggling. There's many people, others are struggling just as you, and you are not alone. That's why it's important to gather fellowship, gather people that are struggling, because the Bible says that we should uplift one another and be encouraged with one another and pluck each other out of the fire. And then in Scripture 10 says, But the God of all the grace has not called us to eternal glory by Jesus Christ. After you have suffered only a little while, may you become perfect, established, strength, and settled to you. And now you know life, this life on earth is so temporary, it's so little. The Bible says it's so little and we are like a vapor. And then the Bible says that we, if we live right, if we do right, if we endure the struggles upon this earth for just a little while, then we will have an eternal glory with him. And in verse 11, it says, to him be all the glory, all the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I just want to give him all the, the glory because I am really nothing without him. I mean, my life, I 
I thank the Lord that he saved me on that day, and I thank him for all he's done for me since that day. He really means the world to me. He's really my best friend. I want to tell you, he will be your best friend. You know, on earth, people will let you down. People will just talk about you, do all these things about you. But Jesus said he'll never lie to you. He'll never tell you anything if it wasn't true. He really will be your best friend if you let him. I just want to encourage you all to give your life to him. Just to read your Bibles, I really encourage you to read your Bibles. Because even if you don't understand, he'll say, if you if he sees that you're trying, he will really help you. He really help you. And just a little bit goes a long way. I mean, just a little verse, a little bit here, a little bit there. Just I mean, nobody I know we have so many distractions. We got our cell phone, we got TV, we got friends, we got games. I mean, we all know how it is. We got so many things, but I just really encourage you to read your Bible because people say they want encouragement but they want wisdom. Only wisdom comes from the Father. I mean, the Bible will tell you that. People say, oh, I've been reading this book and tell me this, but all of it comes from the Lord. I know you see stuff on Instagram, Facebook, but if it's all really true, if it's really wisdom, then you can come in this Bible and you can find it. I mean, this Bible really has every answer for any question you could have. It'll give you motivation when you need even encouragement. It'll just help you when you're sad, when you're down. I mean, Jesus, it's in this Bible for a reason. But I just encourage you to read. I just encourage you to just talk to one another, have fellowship. And just, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I just want to be here. Right, thank you. Mr. David, I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Me either. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, okay. sir. I just wanted to thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask brother brother Doug if he has any uh did you did you have any commentary to add there, brother Doug, to anything that brother Cameron was saying? No, because I caught only half of it. Oh, okay. Um, I was trying to switch to my laptop so I can hear it better than my oh, phone. Okay, okay. We really appreciate you, Brother mm -hmm. Doug, for joining in tonight. Thank, you, thank you so much. Um, did y'all? Where did the scripture come from? I couldn't hear you, Mister Mister David. What'd you say? Where where did Brother Cameron read his scripture from? First Peter. First Peter. Chapter. Chapter five. Five. Chapter five. Verses what? Verses. Seven through eleven. Seven through eleven. Okay. Could y'all could y'all hear everything Brother Cameron was saying? I know he talks he talks really yes. well. But y'all could hear him? Yes. Okay. What was the first thing that he read in his first verse? Cast all your cares upon him. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. That means, uh, Lakaya, do you ever have an exam? Yes, sir. Okay. So that statement says, cast all your cares upon the Lord. So do you care about passing that test? Okay. So yeah. what? So what is that verse telling you to do if you have a test? Pray about it. Give it to Jesus. Give it to the Lord. That's exactly right. That means cat. That's what cast your burdens upon the Lord and he'll take care of you means. You can go to the Lord about anything. Guys, there's nothing out there in this world that you care about that God does not care about as well. I don't care if it's a test. I don't care if it's being a good basketball player, learning how to read music, uh, building something with your hands, 
learning to do Working that on a math. project for school. Exactly. Any learning how to do uh, calculus. If there's anything that you care about, God cares about it just as much for you to be able to do it. So cast all of your cares upon Jesus, and he will show you the way, and he will guide you to where you need to be if you trust and believe in him. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. Now, I didn't always follow that when I was young. Or when I was old, I wasn't always sober in mind. So I'm not going to tell, go into the details of what I wasn't sober about. There's all kind of things you can be not sober. You can be, you can be not be not sober. There's many things that you can won't be sober if you if you indulge in those things. So what I would say is be sober in mind, clear-headed, clear, having a focus. Because guess what? That for the focus that you have, the adversary that we're talking about in verse eight is a hundred percent more focused than you. His primary job is to steal, kill, and destroy. So be sober and vigilant. That means you got to stay at it. You got to keep at it. When you feel yourself is getting, when you feel you're getting unfocused, you need to get, get back on track. Pray. As soon as you feel like you're getting off track, you need to start praying. But you don't need to wait until trouble comes to start praying. We need to pray all the time because our adversary, the Satan, the devil, he's working 24-7. Seven days a week. He don't take no days off. You know how on Sunday we lay up in the recliner and we act like we ain't got no cares in the world? He's still trying to steal, kill, and destroy. When you're in that recliner, eating your ice cream and cake and cookies, think nothing in the world is going to happen to you, guess what? He's trying to figure out how to make something happen to you. So we have to be sober and vigilant. Stay on course. Stay focused. Okay. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. So Jesus Christ is enough, guys. He's enough to sustain us. He's enough to keep us. But we have to keep our eyes on him. If we take our eyes off him just a little bit, there's there's room for for error. There's room for Satan to slip on in. Sometimes we'll, he'll slip in and we don't even realize he's there. He's just chipping away just little pieces of you at a time. Sometimes, just oh, he's just, he's not stopping. Oh, I, if I can, if I can make her do this or make him do that, he'll end up doing this. And once he does that, then I have him on the way. He, he's going to be mine eventually. If he'll just, if I can just keep him doing that little thing, just that little stuff, just the little thing that they don't even, they're not even thinking about is happening. That that's going to cause you to go down the wrong road. So. Satan is real, guys. The adversary is real. And he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So you must stay vigilant, sober. Keep your eyes on Jesus, knowing that God is enough to keep you and to establish you in the, his ways. And one day, I would hope that all would believe in Jesus Christ. God made us to serve him. But he also gives us a choice to do that. We either choose him 
or we go down the broad road, the wide road. It says in the Bible that many will go down the wide road, but few will go down the narrow road. So we must stay vigilant and sober, keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ and trusting and obeying in him, being obedient to him. Last verse, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Guys, God is the ruler of evil and good. He owns it all. He created it all. He created it all. And he loves you. And I love you. Brother Doug loves you. He joined on Youth Devotion tonight for a reason. Because he was showing his love and support of you. And we thank Brother Doug for doing that. Because that means a lot. To know that you have an adult like Brother Doug. To support you in your, and is in your corner. And that maybe someday he might, you might need some advice and you can go to him and say, Brother Doug, I need to talk to you about something. Can you help me? And I'm pretty sure Brother Doug will try to help you in the best way that he can. He will give you the same advice as what this Bible says, cast your burdens upon the Lord. That's the truth. And to, to that, what I say is hallelujah. Everybody say it with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Christian, where are you at? You disappeared on me. I see a lot of foreheads. We got we got eleven people that joined tonight, so I'm so thankful for Brother Cameron. Let me get him to slide in here in here so y'all can see him again. We just want to thank Brother Cameron again for sharing his heart with you. Uh, this is wonderful scripture, guys. If you have a chance, you no, know, there's chances for you to read this scripture again, and I would love for you to take time to go through to, through that scripture again. Tell me what that scripture is, Jory. First Peter 7 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, verses 7 through 11. Taylor, tell me what that last 11, verse 11 says. Taylor. You hear me, Taylor? Jaden, yeah, tell me what. That, but we all who take refuge in you. Wrong words, my bad. Hey, <laughs> girl, you better tighten up. You better be sober, gal. <laughs> get sober. Renew your mind. Get it right. <laughs> Verse 11. Read it out loud. Taylor, you there? Again, Mr. Oh, David. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. And I'm trying to get Taylor to read the 11th, the 11th verse.
I found it now. Okay. It says, to him be power forever and always, amen. Okay. That must, is that the NIV version? It's the, I don't know. Oh, okay. The common English Bible, that's what it is. Oh, okay. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to end on that. So guys, whenever we have devotion, let's maybe try to have our Bibles. So that, that will help sometimes. That would be very helpful to have your Bibles so you can follow along with the scriptures that um, whoever is leading the, the devotion, um, that would be very helpful. Good. Or on your phone, like Jaden's. Jaden just showed you. But we really appreciate tonight. We just thank the Lord that Cameron, Brother Cameron, is here tonight to share the word of God because uh, we, we shouldn't take this lightly, guys. This is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be unto God for the word. Does anybody have any requests? The first request, prayer request I would like to uh, ask for tonight is Brother Preacher Sam. Preacher Sam has been very sick, and he's starting to feel a whole lot better. So I would ask you to pray for Preacher Sam. Make sure you put him in your prayers. Also, the Carolyn Jacobs family. Yes, something. Excuse me? Does he have the flu or something? Yeah, he has some like flu-like symptoms, but he's starting to feel a whole lot better. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Carol, the, remember the Carolyn Jacobs family? Um, she, they had a death. Uh, Carolyn Jacobs family. Carolyn Jacobs passed away. Uh, that's Brother Bob Cummins' uh, wife's sister. They used to play the piano here at our church, Brother Bob Cummins, his wife's sister. Passed away. Um Hey, Brother Robert. Yeah, hey, Brother, I'm on a, I'm on a Zoom devotion right now. Can I give you a call right back? Uh, okay, Brother. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, we have also a, a lady, young lady named Sherry. We want to pray for her. I'm not going to say her last name, but her name is Sherry. Um. And the Patsy Hunt family had a death in their family, a massive heart attack. Those are that's Brother Robert Dees' first cousin. Uh, are there any other prayer, prayer requests? Use the vision. Any other prayer requests from anyone? Brother David, I want us just to continue to remember all the folks that we've been lifting up in prayer uh, on Sunday afternoons and and, you know, some of these children may even have friends or uh, have friends who have brothers and sisters who are addicted to drugs and alcohol or starting to try those things. And, again, we just want to lift up. Mm -hmm. This is the age when, when, when Satan definitely starts wanting to, to tempt you and lure you, and it seems mm -hmm. to be getting younger and younger. So really want to say a special prayer to, to put a hedge of protection around uh, these children that are uh, in this devotion tonight, and but, but especially for those who are already, like you say, in over your in over their heads. But we know that God can deliver them. Yes. So, yeah. um, and I really want to uh, commend this young man, Mr. Mr. Bryant, for coming. And God is going to continue to use you mightily when when you step out and you're bold for Him, like you're doing. Uh, He's gonna bless you, and, and like you said, it's a it's a battle all the time. Oh, he's had a fine God. Yeah, he's got. I can just tell he seems to have a special call on your life. Amen. So I just I just <laughs> encourage you to continue. You 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 continue to say yes because he's the Lord's gonna keep opening doors for you Amen. to um especially you you can reach at nineteen. You 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 got a direct line to our young people, so 
I, I'm sure uh, Brother David will be having you come back, but yeah. I, you yeah. just really lifted up my heart tonight, too, son. So we'll continue to pray for you and your Amen. ministry. Amen. And let me let me add this, guys. I was raised from from a, a young boy up until through high school. Went to church two or three times a week, every week. Thought I was doing everything right. I didn't start getting crazy until after high school. Guess what? That old devil, he didn't give up. He was still trying to steal, kill, and destroy. He started stealing and trying to eat. He tried just about kill me. He just about killed me. And I was past all them. I, I didn't get wild when I was younger. I waited till I got older to get wild. You spe- that's when you're supposed to start having more com- more common sense, more sense to understand that you 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 don't need to do those things. But he he was on me. He stayed on me. He might have left me for a little while, but he came back with a vengeance. He said, "You've been going to that church every week, every week, two and three times, and you've been staying away from me because you'd say Jesus here and there. But, buddy, I'll tell you what: I'll get you where you won't even want to say Jesus." And he got me there too, buddy. He got me to where I didn't care about one thing. He got me to where I didn't even want to. I stayed away from my mother and father for three years almost. Didn't talk to him. So now we can all sit around and say, oh, it ain't going to happen to me. I go to church every week. I'm, I'm, my mom and dad is Christians in the church. I'm, I'm, I'm going to church all the time. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going out volunteering. I'm doing community work. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Without Jesus, we are nothing. Without Jesus, we are nothing. So I want you to to, to take this to heart, what Brother Cameron said tonight. This is a very important scripture, guys. Very important scripture. And I would ask you to go back to it a couple of times this week and just read it. And you'll see the perspective that I'm trying to tell you about right now. It's going to take everything you got to fight him off. But you still can't do it without him, with Jesus. You, can't, you still can't do it without Jesus. You can fight. Do all you want to do, but without Jesus, it ain't going to happen. You got to believe and trust in him. Call on his name. So let's go to prayer. We're going to pray before we leave. Shall we pray? Lord, I just thank you tonight, God, for this wonderful scripture, God. This is a scripture that we've all heard so many times, God. But there's a reason why it's been brought to us again tonight, God, because it is just important and it's the truth of what in the reality of Satan, God, and the power that he has, God. We also know, God, that that power is nothing compared to your power, Jesus, Lord, and your strength, God, It's nothing compared to the Lord Jesus Christ, God. And we just thank you, God, that you went up on Calvary, Lord, to and shed your precious blood, God, to give us a chance to, and the gift of life, God, if we would just accept you and believe on you. Lord, we just thank you for all these youth and Brother Doug that has joined tonight, Sister Joanne, God, all the support that we get from our church members, Lord, we just thank them and appreciate them so much for them coming and sharing with us tonight. We just thank you for most of all for your word, Jesus, 
that you've written, God, and through the holy inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God. Thank you for the truth that it has for us, Jesus, the power that it gives us, Lord, through you, Jesus. Lord, we ask for continued blessings for preacher Sam, God, these prayer requests that we read, the two deaths, God, and the families, Lord, just touch those families and be with them. Minister them, minister to them, God, and comfort them in this time of need. Continue to be with all of our families, Lord. Continue to give Brother Cameron the boldness and not to be ashamed, God, Lord, but to go out and continue to convey your word and share the gospel with Jesus Christ as commissioned by you in Matthew 28, God, the great commission. We just thank you, Lord. Continue to bless, God, and continue to cover us, God, with your grace and mercy, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Wonderful night tonight. We thank you. And continue to, if you would like to volunteer to do a devotion, I'd love to have you do it. Uh, you can do it from home if you have your phone or a computer. Um. I would love for someone to maybe uh, venture out and uh, pick a scripture and we just talk about it and go over it uh, on our devotion night. If you'd like to do that, just let me know. You have my cell phone number or I can tell you, tell you right now, 910-301-9604. We have Bible study tomorrow night at 630. We also have uh, Sunday service at 10 o'clock on Zoom Sunday morning. And also, we have a uh, a prayer vigil, which will only be which will only be two more Sundays, the 21st and the 28th. These are the last two times we've that will be seven times that we've had prayer vigil. So these are the last two times. That is at four o'clock to five o'clock on Sunday afternoon. If you have an attendant, we'd sure love to have you there, um, so we can pray together for our communities. And all of those who are suffering and broken, broken in our in our communities. So thank you guys. We appreciate you. I love you. And I'm counseling out. Peace. <laughs>